Ronaldo's best of 2022 albums. First of all, this is not top 10 list for a reason. Um, I couldn't find enough really, really good albums for top 10. So I decided to drop those albums that are 8 out of 10 or worse from the list and focus 8 albums only. So only two differences, but nonetheless. This is something that I pondered upon for a couple of reasons. First of all, time. And secondly, sometimes if I put like five or ten different eight out of ten albums against each other, it would be rather a game of chance than rather just like, hey, this eight out of ten is exactly better than the other one. So I decided to drop all of those from the list and focus only eight albums. Not all of these are metal, in fact, so mind you, this is my top eight albums of the year, not eight metal albums. So there are a couple of surprises for you. There is at least one album which I have heard but haven't yet had the proper time to listen to it, so it couldn't make to the list even though it's a runner-up. I will mention it in the end because it could have been my album of the year. And then there are other albums which are still on my review list, so I haven't had time to listen to them in 2022, so they're not on this list. I hope once again to make another list like the ones that were missed out on this list later on in 2023, so there's another chance for those that came kind of late to the party or were just never received in time. So here we have on number eight, which we'll be starting the list with is Destroy 666 with Never Surrender. First of all, I was thinking this is roughly eight out of ten. But the more I gave it listens, I kind of had to nudge up a little bit because this is in fact a very, very good album. Not the best of the band, but I like how they incorporate heavy metal into black metal, into trash metal and all that stuff. So an interesting hybrid to just nail it very, very simple ways. Proper review is on the channel of all these albums, so you don't have to get to detailed description here, but roughly making it until spot number eight. The next one is exactly a dark ambient or more like isolationist, let's say, Sham Genre Go with an album Interdimensional by Sonologist. This one is very much with the on the same level with this next one, which I'm gonna uh, show you. And this is also called Spring Release, whereas Destroy 666 is a season of mist. And this is very, very minimal kind of uh, instrumental music. No riffs, no drum patterns, no vocals, which is very, very important when I'm talking about dark ambient and the like. And uh, this could be very, very much on the same page with the next one, Ten Horn Pieced, The Lamp of No Light, because these both are very minimal and they're very dark, not exactly sinister maybe. That's where why Ten Horn Beast is one step ahead of Sonologist. It's a little bit darker, where Sonologist is more just kind of a drony. Isolationist is very, very good for this kind of stuff, whereas Ten Horn Beast is, in my opinion, a step towards Dark Ambient from that stuff. So small differences, but maybe more important ones. And because they are so eerie albums, both of them, uh, I need to have them on this particular list. And that is also reminded to talk about the number one. But before we go into that, or actually the one that isn't on the list, but could be the number one, then there is an album I couldn't find in my uh, record shelf, uh, probably, and now it comes to my mind. It must be on the vinyl, but I am not going to uh, dig it out. Next one is Freya with the Tides album. And that is something that combines the kind of a post black metallic parts into something that is very, very beautiful and also had the kind of rawness of a black metal. I was trying to find it so hard in my record shelf and I was like, where is it? I must have misplaced it. And only when I'm not doing this uh, video, it's on vinyl somewhere. But because the whole office man cave uh, place was renovated, things are still a little bit messy here. Anyway, it's for worth mentioning that Freya is on this list because it's so good of an album. And like I said, it's made of beautiful parts and more raw parts. And it blends these two together in a beautiful way. They are like be beautiful uh, female clean vocals as well as screamier parts. And that just melts in in a wonderful, wonderful way. And as such, it deserves the uh, spot number five here. 
towards more traditional black metal we go with a surprising element by Swedish black metal named Vatine. Vatine has been always been a little bit of a hit and miss for me. Some albums are good and some albums are just kind of decent. And um, at first I was having the same kind of experience with this one as Destroy 666 Never Surrender. Because the thing here is, at first I was like, okay, it's just a good album. But the more and more I gave it listens during the spring, the more layers I started to find. And there are interesting parts where everything is like, okay, you can appeal this onion and you will find more layers. And it's so multifaceted. It's very diverse of an album having lots of interesting parts here and there. And it goes beyond uh, the scope of typical black metal albums. Second wave or third wave, doesn't really matter. And that's why this is probably my favorite Vatan album of all times. I know it's not for everybody, that's kind of a guaranteed and given, but for me it does the tricks in a right way, and as such it deserves its place on this list, spot number four. Uh, one of my favorite bands, Origin, from death metal territory with the technical and more brutal kind, came up with the new album Chaosmos. And much like the previous Origin albums, this is doing exactly what I'm expecting Origin to do. To sound fierce, to sound brutal, sound technical, sound violent, sound aggressive, and also have a lot of diversity in terms of, you know, doing the songs. Slow tempo, mid tempo, fast tempo, hyper tempo. Well, in a way. The lots of details happening in the drum section alone, let alone with, you know, when guitars and bass and vocals are added, it's chaotic but also in perfect order. It's a very technical, but at the same time, very groovy and brutal. One of my favorite death metal bands of all time, once again, delivered near perfect blow. And as such, it deserves to be on top three. Now, my favorite black metal album came from a new, new band that is technically speaking, sort of kind of a side project with some kind of a superstar. <laughs> I know it's kind of a bold statement, but kind of a superstar uh, lineup. This one features, for example, drummer of Asphyx, members of uh, Nugglefar from Sweden, etc. So three different guys from three different bands and uh, backgrounds, and they made this great second wave black metal. At some points, it's almost like doing Dark Throne when Dark Throne is unable to do it. It sounds kind of a craft as well, but more importantly, it's made of really, really good songs. There's a great kind of an evil, sinister feeling to it, great grooviness with riffs and at the same time being dark and grim. This is the kind of grim black metal I am very, very much, um, you know, I'm, I'm so happy about it. I, I mean, it takes me in, blends in me to this dark dungeon and just shines this kind of evil, dark light. I don't know if there's a better way to describe it. Once again, all of these have been uh, reviewed as individual reviews on the channel so more information there but this one for a reason deserves my second spot and now comes the surprise album number one because this is not death metal not black metal not even trash metal this is evergrey from sweden and this is melancholic and dark metal music in progressive and almost like aor fashion now i get to like evergrey as late as only like maybe four three or four years ago and I was impressed how their music can be so dark and somewhat progressive and also heavy and super emotional at the same time. On top of that, the vocalist is just great heavy metal vocalist. Nice articulation, so much warm and feeling in how he weighs, uh, in how he weighs uh, Tom does the, uh, you know, singing. And on top of that, you know, you have the guitars that just kind of a seep in with lots of passion, lots of melancholy and kind of dark feelings, which then again speak to me in a way I cannot even try to uh, describe so that you would totally understand it. Those who love Eric Grey probably understand what I'm talking about, and those who think this is not take her cup of tea will never get it. I'm not ex expecting people from black metal or death metal background to like it, because to begin with, it doesn't even sound like it's my genre to begin with at all. It's a kind of a weird album, in a way, kind of a metallic Pink Floyd later era, that is. And maybe that's the reason why I like it so much. So Evergrey is my album of the year with the, or band of the year with the, the new album, A Heartless Portrait. 
this is something that I fell in love already in uh, June, I think. And later on, when I got the CD, I had been spinning it so many times and still thinking it's a wonderful, wonderful album. One of their better ones, for sure. And now to mention the surprise album that isn't on the list, but could be, and uh, is definitely the runner-up and might be even on the top spot. That is the new LAL album, a dark ambient project by none other than Nabal Dutch, Mitch Harris, who have been doing LAL and very minimalist, very uh, isolationist kind of uh, dark ambient throughout the years, one of the better ones in my opinion. And their latest album or his latest album is just wonderful. I hope that I will get to review it later on, but meanwhile, I don't have the album here. I truly don't know. But that's something that you should keep your ears peeled for in case you like dark ambient to begin with. I hope I gave you some ideas with this list. And if not, well, there's always the, my review list with lots of albums throughout the years, which I have reviewed thousands and thousands of um, albums and other, uh, other releases for you to check out. And of course, there's plenty of good music and new music coming all the way. So have a good year 2023, and I hope you found some of the reviews, some of the names worthwhile checking. Meanwhile, take care and uh, see you soon with more albums coming your way.